It's no secret that I've been critical of church mobile apps over the years. And as we move into 2020, you might be wondering, has anything changed? Maybe church apps have evolved or the current digital landscape has changed. However, my answer remains the same. For 99% of churches, a mobile app will be more harmful than helpful. But the reasons why I believe this are a bit different than in the past. Consider this. One of the biggest points of frustration I hear from churches is that they rarely have enough time or money to accomplish everything they want to. And if you've served in church for any period of time, you can likely resonate with that feeling. And this is actually often why the prospect of a church mobile app is so enticing for churches to begin with. It gets presented as the missing piece of the puzzle. Your church has a website? Great. You're active on social media? That's a good start. But are you still not seeing the results you want? Have you considered a mobile app? You may not know, a lot of the big churches you look up to actually have one. And this seductive church app narrative is especially sinister because while presenting itself as the missing link, as the solution to a problem, it actually exaggerates the problem to make it much worse than it was before. Because herein lies the fundamental issue with church apps as they currently exist. Your church app ecosystem is separate from your church website ecosystem. There's very little a church app can do that a church website cannot. And these two platforms, they don't interface with one another in meaningful ways. They're siloed, they're isolated. And now your church already short on time and money must pay for two separate solutions and work to maintain two separate solutions as well. Think about it this way. My family and I moved into a new house this year. We furnished the home, we maintain it, we pay for the monthly costs. Of course, our home isn't perfect, but it's serving the purpose it's meant to serve. Now, suppose I go to my family and I say, I've come up with a great idea. I saw another home down the street go up for sale. We're going to buy it and keep the home we already have. And we're going to furnish that new home. We're going to maintain it. We're going to pay for the monthly costs. Are we going to live there? No, not permanently anyway, but we can go back and forth between both homes. Is there anything the new home can do that our current home cannot No, not really functionally, but the new home looks different and it's a bit newer than our current home and it's it's just cool. And look, I know our current home isn't perfect and I thought about it. We could work to improve this home we already have. We could even build an addition onto it to solve its current problems, but I'm convinced that a second home will actually be a better solution. Will it cost more? Yes. Will it be twice the work to maintain both? Yes. Are we already working with a tight budget and schedule? Sure, but I'm convinced this is the right move for our family. Now, obviously, listening to that story, you can see the obscene logic at work. And yet this is precisely what our churches are doing as we rationalize having both a mobile app and a website. And it really does pain me to see churches falling for this trap because I understand digital communications, but most churches don't. And it's like me going to a mechanic and they say to me, oh yeah, I see the problem. Your Harrison Buckler is out of alignment. We'll need to send away for that part, but it'll definitely be an improvement for you and your vehicle. I don't know anything about the inner workings of vehicles. I'd probably just believe them and what they're saying to me. So let this be a public service announcement for churches. For 99% of us, a mobile app will be more harmful than helpful. And especially if you as a church have ever felt that feeling of a lack of time or money, a church app is only gonna exaggerate that problem, not solve it. Instead, continue to work on your web presence and your social media efforts. Especially don't take time or finances away from those to put into an app. And if you've ever been offered a church app as a bonus add-on to let's say your giving platform, ask yourself this question. If this app platform is being offered as a bonus add-on to my giving solution, can it really be that robust of a platform? Because when it comes to church apps, there's very little they can do that a church website cannot, if anything. And a second home, whether digital or physical, isn't going to solve the problems that exist. On the contrary, it will likely only make things worse.